Welcome to Wednesday. It's February 1st, 2023. I think a lot of folks are happy that January is in the rearview mirror. This podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com and also brought to you by YDOT. As we take a look at what's headed our way here for this hump day Wednesday in the second half of the week, well, we're going to continue to have very windy areas again today. And for folks trying to travel along Interstate 80 and I-90 and the high elevation roadways and highways, blowing and drifting snow will continue. And although temperatures are moderating, we're still going to be pretty chilly today and still have some pretty cold wind chill values. So basically today is similar to yesterday, except it'll be a little bit warmer, but that wind will still be causing a lot of blowing snow issues for travelers. But temperatures here for the second half of the week and into the weekend are slowly going to warm up. As we mentioned yesterday, those basins and snow-covered valleys will be last to get warmer. Now, the snow chances through Friday, and really probably for the weekend, are pretty low. So we're going to get a break with no real significant new snow here for the next few days. However, pattern next week gets busy again and beyond. We're going to start to see Pacific weather start to get more influential as we get into the next week and the week after. So uh, there's really no long-term pause in this stormy winter weather we've had here lately, other than what's coming here over the next four to five days. So you're gonna wanna take advantage of it. Also, uh, we added up some numbers yesterday for the month of January, and we all know how cold and snowy it's been, especially snowy in many areas. But when you take a look at how the month of January stacked up in some parts of the region, a very, very impressive month for precipitation. Now with all the snow, the moisture in the air, and all the cold weather we've had lately, we have had a lot of folks send pictures in of sun dogs, where you get that sun that looks like a rainbow with ice crystals in the air when the, uh, when the clouds and the sun and the low horizon and the ice crystals in the air and the very cold temperatures all come together. You get just a lot of sun dogs. Here's a great sun dog shot out of Rock Springs. You can see the sun dog here from up in the northern Bighorn Mountains. As the sun gets low on that horizon, either in the morning or around sunset, is when you're going to see those sun dogs out there. Satellite photo today shows the ice storm continues here in parts of the lower uh, southern plains. Cold, wintry weather moving into these areas here. While you can see out here in the west, we still have some very cold pockets. See that blue? The blue there just showing some very cold air still at the surface. But from California through the Pacific Northwest here, there isn't much going on. So we're just not going to see any new precipitation. It's just going to be a situation of dealing with the old precipitation. The very, very cold air is moving off to the east. You can see the Hudson Bay vortex. You see that white pocket up there over Hudson Bay? That is extreme cold. I mean, there will be some 50 degree below zero or colder temperatures up in this part of Canada here over the next two or three days. Just extreme cold that's headed towards New England and parts of the new northeastern United States. While here out west, a westerly flow, a little bit of a Chinook is starting to form. But the wind is going to be a problem. Here are the wind gusts forecasted here over the next 48 hours or so. And still very, very windy. You can see along I-25 in Wyoming and along I-80 where there's a ton of snow on the ground, the blowing and drifting is going to continue to cause a lot of problems for travelers. So you're going to have to exercise patience on those roads and highways and be careful. The blowing and drifting causes a lot of black ice. So the early parts of the day and the late afternoon and evenings is when you're most susceptible to that black ice forming. Now, as we go out to Friday, notice a westerly flow here really starts to develop. So these are our moderating temperatures. The dagger of severe cold, though, heads into the northeast. And what I'm going to do now is going to step you through the temperature anomalies over the next several days to show you how things change. These are the temperature anomalies for today. So you can see lots of purple and lots of blue and lots of green in a lot of places, except we're starting to see the Chinook effect up here for you folks in Montana and western areas of North Dakota and South Dakota. So you're gonna start to see temperatures at least get closer to average up there. But you can see the cold hanging out across the Southern Plains, headed up towards New England. You can see all that green up there in Canada. So this is today. This is for tomorrow. There's another dive bombing of the Arctic air, though, plunging into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. The good news, though, it's more directed to the east. So by Friday, 
You can see the purple up here in the Great Lakes, up in New England, the severe cold, and the Chinook zone grows here. And you can see temperatures are going to want to moderate. You might be saying for Northeast Colorado, Nebraska, well, why is it not moderating here? Well, that's because of the deep snow cover that's out onto the plains. But the worst of the cold does move off to the east, and this is by Saturday afternoon. By Saturday afternoon, the cold goes all the way to the east coast, and we're going to be warmer here. This blue patch here is basically just due to snow-covered basins and valleys where you're just still going to be having a hard time getting too warm because of all the snow cover. But the severe Arctic cold is leaving. We have to deal with the wind, though, as it leaves. Precipitation-wise, this is through Sunday evening. Now look at California. Look at the Pacific Northwest getting wet again. The Pacific is going to start to get active. Now remind everybody to what happened after the last Arctic outbreak. When we had that big Arctic outbreak in December, we had the severe cold, we had a bit of a pause, then we saw the Pacific get stormy. I think we're gonna see somewhat of a similar situation to where this Arctic wave will be followed by a break, then followed by storms hitting the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest again. I do not see it though of the intensity of what we saw in early January and late December with that stormy Pacific pattern. But it's somewhat of a similar situation where the Pacific starts to get stormy again and we look less north and we look more to the west. So this is through the weekend. It'll be the Pacific Northwest, California, that sees most of the weather. Very little weather going on elsewhere. But by Monday morning, we do have one of those west coast troughs come into the Rockies and high plains and there you go. This is the 72-hour precipitation from Monday through Wednesday of next week. Snow returns to the central and northern Rockies, especially along the divide and west of the divide, and more weather for the west coast again. So the weather pattern will get busy. We just had some incredible snow totals, as we discussed yesterday, in the mountains. The Sierra Madres and Snowy Range in particular. Look at that Medicine Bow Peak, 94 inches. The National Weather Service putting this together. Now, a lot of this snow, when it gets this deep, is measured by the snowpack sensors, or what we call snow tail sites, where you take the amount of liquid water equivalent, you compare that to what the temperature was when the snow fell, and these are the amounts of snow that we're seeing being reported in the mountains of southern Wyoming. And also, we can include the north central mountains of Colorado had amounts similar to this as well, basically the headwaters of the North Platte. And that's why the North Platte and Little Snake River drainages have extremely high, much above average snowpack for this time of year. And snowpack's really, really good across Wyoming for the most part, as well as into Colorado. I mean, there's a lot of water locked up and we still got February, March, April to add to those totals. Now I wanted to show you kind of a, a sampling of locations to where we saw the heaviest precipitation in the month of January. It should be noted that the three driest months on a climatological basis for most of the central Rockies and northern Rockies is going to be December, January, and February. When you look at the average amount of precipitation that falls in liquid water equivalent, those are the three driest months. But we have precipitation amounts in the month of January that are, are more like what we would see in March or, or April. Uh, look at Cheyenne, which had been very, very dry well, for all of 2022, but the new year is off to a great start. That is a lot of liquid water equivalent for snow for Cheyenne. And 20 inches of snow is a lot for the month of January as well. But the areas that really take the cake right here are going to be these locations in Wyoming, where it's just off the charts wet for January, as well as look at Salt Lake City, just under three inches of liquid water equivalent. Now this shows you how much above average in inches those amounts are. So when you look at Lander, when you look at Rollins, those two areas in particular really, really got it. And then if you look at where does that stack up? Well, a lot of these highest since phrases I have here basically are when a lot of the records that we go back to look at started. Um, and so we're looking at the snowiest, wettest January in a long, long time across a lot of the areas that I'm highlighting here. So this is a, a way to really put a dent in the drought conditions. We have a long way to go, but we're certainly making good progress with what's happened so far as we started the new year. Have yourself a good Wednesday and a happy first day of February.